Good morning. Today is Friday, December 8th, 2023. I will be the moderator for this class. Class, you have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of, on, of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. The school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. A host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are lords and gods many, but we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator, Yahweh, chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on the Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. 
Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold, divine threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually is. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in men. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning, we will begin with a prayer uh, by Dr. Bonnie Snyder. She's available. Uh, we will have a song by Dr. Carlton Gordon. Our scripture lesson will be read by Dr. Jackie McCain. And our readers for today's session are Dr. Deborah Hanna and Dr. Edna Mixon. May we have our prayer, please? Dr. Snyder, are you available? Yes, ma'am. Got my mouth full, just like a second. <laughs> a prayer? Is yes, please. Yes. Okay. I'm babysitting. Yes, thank you. I'm only half listening. Okay. Uh, could we all bow our hearts and minds to Yahshua? Thank you, Yahshua, for allowing us to gather once more in your great name of salvation. Thank you for showing us the way to learn, know, and understand you and have 
confidence and the reality of all the things that happen physically in our lives. We know the reason why things ha are the way they are. And we know that the outcome for us is going to be good because of the way that you have set things up. Thank you, Yasha, for everything you've done, especially for showing us the way and giving us this great love of the truth and keeping us in the way all this time. Uh, for many of us, it's been many, many years and gone through a lot of things and we appreciate all the things that have happened. Uh, thank you, Ashwa, for everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Gordon? Yes, ma'am. Would you sing you for us this morning? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Yeah, well, when you hear about according to Yahweh's will, it's exactly what it is. Anyway. <clears throat> One peace like a river attendeth my way. One sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Yeshua has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, it is well. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross. In the bed, no more. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, oh, my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul and Yahweh haste the day when the fate shall be sight the clouds be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and Yeshua does descend even so it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah. 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 Thank it is well with my soul. Today's yes. lesson will be brethren. 
Today's scripture lesson will be Proverbs, the 30th chapter, verse 4, and Matthews 1, verses 20 through 25. Proverbs 30 and 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? Matthews 1 and 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for, they which is for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by Yahweh, by spoken of by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Then Joseph being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of Yahweh had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Yahshua. I've just read Proverbs 30 and 4, Matthews 1, 20 through 25. May we all say hallelujah. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. 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 We've had a change in our readers today. Our readers for this session will be Dr. Edna Nixon and Dr. Teresa Baker. And uh, we thank everyone for coming out and studying with us today. And I will now turn this back over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad we're all assembled together. Um, I know we're working on the ninth theme today, so I tried to pick scriptures that were going to lead you right into that name. So if Dr. McCain can tell us who's the people that are going to be working with us today. Good morning, okay. everyone. Good morning, Dr. Allen. Good morning. We have a change in schedule today. Uh, Edna and Deborah are going to do the ninth aim on Tuesday. So I was hoping that we can go back uh, the second, we're on the second reading of One Spirit and a Body. If okay. we can go through that and maybe uh, some ministers in the class can speak up and, and, you know, walk us through some of the things that you, that Yahweh put on your heart to share with us. So uh, I know it's the last minute thing, but we had just got to page three, but if you want to start from the beginning, that would be great. Or if you want to do something. Oh, no, no, we should start from the beginning. Okay. Do, you see it on, do you see it on the screen? Yes. Okay. Give a reading. Readers. Okay, I can start. I'm October sorry, the six, I was on mute. <laughs> October the 6th, 1974. One spirit and a body. Dr. Henley, Henry C. Kinley, 1040 South Grand Avenue, Los Angeles, California. Uh, 190 minutes, audit cassette, category, Catalog seven no, four one. This means one ninety minute audio, so it's one ninety minute audio. Okay, I apologize. That's one ninety minute audio. Uh, we we'll go down to catalog. Okay, okay, okay. Wherever you want us to start with the following paragraph was at the beginning of the original transcript. First of all, let me put in that. We apologize. We made mention that we will be doing this on Tuesday. I don't know if everyone got the memo, but we did say that we're going to do it on Tuesday because one of the partners is not available today. 
The following paragraph was at the beginning of the original transcript, but was not on the tape. It was probably lost in tape duplication, Dr. Kinley. Thank you ever so much. I am sure all of you were benefited this morning by Dr. Harris. When he went into the persecution that Paul and all of them suffered and what they are doing out there in Christian doom. Now he took it down polytechnical. There is no excuse for nobody's ignorance the way he brought that down this morning. So after I got home, there was this person that brought the person. They told me that the person that they brought didn't understand what they were talking about. And they said that they had to go to their church tonight because they had to, they were going there to take communion. Is that right, person? Now, when he told me about <clears throat> that this morning, I just reached over and tapped Dr. Harris on the shoulder and told him to tell Dr. Harris about it. That's the reason why. That's the reason why Dr. Harris preached as he did. Now, what we try to do in this class to, to help people, help save their souls. Definitely, they have been deceived and they really don't know and understand what the purpose of Yahweh is. And it is incumbent upon us that do know to get up here and tell you the truth just like it is. It's tough. It's hard. <clears throat> now, I wouldn't have gotten up here this morning had it not been for that. And before I got out of bed this morning, I got a call from New York, Dr. Sandra Garagoshian, and she was telling me about some tapes that were made. And we try to keep those tapes away from the general public. <clears throat> but Billy Carroll got a hold of them in New York. They were sent there. I think she said, she said that my daughter sent them there, Lena. And they made some electrical transcriptions of them. And they were played around different places. And so she was very much concerned and worked up about it. And I just told her, there has never been nothing taught in this school that's so secretive that we had to keep it away from the general public. But there are many things that are taught in this school that people just pass by as they did this morning. And then they run on out there and get the wrong understanding of it and go ahead on. And what we intend to do, we speak the wisdom of Yahweh as you just read in the lesson there, the wisdom of Yahweh in the mystery. And you just don't come with a carnal mind and just pick it up overnight and then run on out the door and never come back no more to study nothing about it. And when I got through with her call, I hadn't got out, out of bed yet. Then I got another call and from Canada one of Dr. Channer's students was talking with me about the subject that I want to speak on tonight. I want to talk something about it. I want to have something to say about it. Then when I get to Sunday school on the tail end of it, then here's the same thing was up again. It was talked about in Sunday school. And some time ago, Dr. Burbank Mitchell talked to me about it and asked me about it. And I told him, no, it was not like many people had said it was. Now I'm gonna try my best to make this plain. And that is that there's two spirits in a person, the devil or a demonic spirit and the saint and the spirit of Yahweh. Now that's not so. Now, Yahshua the Messiah, when he took his disciples out before he died, 
He sent them out to cast out devils or demons. Is that almost right? That's right. That's right. <clears throat> now, when they cast them out, they walked through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. And they went back to the house from whence they were cast out of or the person in whom they were cast out of. And they found the house swept and garnished, but not occupied. And they couldn't break in. So what they did was went and got some lesions, some more, in order to break in. And then the last state of that person was worse than the first. Now, don't, don't, don't misunderstand now. I said that was before he died. Now, since that be the case, they cast those devils out. Now, those demons out. And oftentimes, they're called, just called devils, but there ain't but one devil. It's those demonic spirits that were cast out of heaven and let me make this real plain because it's definitely involved in what we're talking about and those demonic spirits they were cast out of heaven and being incarnated in men posing as ministers of righteousness now those are the ones that they went to to get some help to try and break in. Do you understand what I mean by that? Now, if you don't understand, I'm up here to make you understand what I'm talking about. That's night, that night, the Sanhedrin council, when the devil was cast out of them, the people, they walked through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none, finding none. Then they went back to the house where they were cast out and they couldn't break in because they found the house swept and garnished, but it wasn't occupied, but they couldn't break in then. So then they went to the Pharisees and the scribes that had them other demonic spirits in them to try to gainsay. I thought I'd tell you who them other did that legion was. I thought that would be nice for you. If you knew that, that's, that led legion and the, there, the, the latter state was worse than the first. Now that was under the dispensation of the law and was before Yahshua the Messiah died. Now and after he died on the cross, he died. Now, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying, because we don't want, want to make a failure out of his ministry. We don't want you to misunderstand. We don't want you to misconstrue. He died to put an end to sin. And there remained no more sacrifice for sin. Read, John, whosoever is one of Yahweh, doth not commit sin. Now we want that understood. I think it's the first epistle, I'm sure, and it's the second or third chapter. I'm not just sure which it is. I just didn't take time to look these things up and I ain't making no notes. If you notice, I very seldom do you ever see me with a Bible in my hand. Read it. Whosoever is born of Yahweh doth not practice sin, doth not sin. Read it out of the King James Version. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his sin, for his seed remaineth in him. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin. And he cannot sin because he is born of Elohim. Because he is born of Elohim. Now, what is a sin in the first place? A lot of people don't know what a sin is. 
They think chewing tobacco, smoking cigarettes, and drinking whiskey say that's what a sin is. Fred, see if you can find what a sin is. And I think you'll find it's a transgression of the law. Now, I'm having you look these things up. But now, what we're really after is after Yahshua the Messiah is, had died. Want to make it plain, resurrected from the dead, ascended into heaven, poured out the Holy Spirit of the day of Pentecost. And from there on, they were out of the sinning business. And we don't want you to have the impression that you continue on in sin. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about. That is that one of these demonic spirits is setting up in you and the Holy Spirit. There's not room enough for both of them. If you notice on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, if you had a glass and you filled it full of water, you couldn't get no more in it. Why? Because it's filled. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it is that Holy Spirit that moves out, moves the satanic spirit out. Now, after he died and resurrected from the dead and sent them out, he sent them out the last time, told them to go back to Jerusalem and tarry there until they received power from on high, and then ye shall be witnesses unto me in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. In other words, he sent them on out to cast out demonic spirits. Now, when this, now when the demonic spirits was cast out of those men by them having the Holy Spirit, then what happened? They were sealed with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were sealed and with the promise. How long? Till the day of redemption. Now John says this, and this is also in the law. There is a sin that is not unto death. I do not say that you should pray for it. Now, that's blasphemy. And now a person with the Holy Spirit in them, I want you to see and understand what I'm talking about. Person with the Holy Spirit in them, just like Peter down at Cornelius' house. And we're taught that water baptism and carnal ordinances and all those things was passed away, right? Right. Right. Peter commanded them to be baptized in water, which was done upon the dispensation of the law. That is John baptizing under the dispensation of the law. That was wrong. No water baptism in this age. Colonel ordinances all been fulfilled and moved out of the way. But now when the Holy Spirit has come, he teaches. He teaches you all things. Now, these people that have indulged and participated in that, they don't know no better. And you never will find out no better out there in the Roman Catholic Church and in the Protestant churches. Just like it was a grievous, very grievous thing for that person to sit here this morning after Dr. Harris had preached as hard as he had preached. And then they turned around and said, they had to go to their church tonight, the Baptist church, to take communion. And even okay. now, the book says, and even now, the book says, you can't eat it. And Yahshua told them that was the last supper. Now, these people just don't understand things. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, what we do in the second reading is like we discuss it, we answer any questions, we bring forth questions that we may have, 
and the reason that we were reading this is that we had read in the textbook where um, it was talking about because you have the carbon dioxide and the oxygen in your body that shows that you have two spirits in a in a body, and that's not that's not what it's showing. It's showing that this negative thing is being cast out. And I got a question. Yes, but I just want I just want to make a point. Then you can have your question. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so one of the things that people heard when they heard that the physical laws that were given to the Jews and to the Jews only, that the law was out, people interpreted it. I don't have to be obedient to man's laws anymore. I don't, the Ten Commandments is out. I don't have to, I can lie. I can steal. I can cheat. I don't know why you would think that. Being that when they received the Holy Spirit, they went and they talked to the Jews first. Seven years later, they're speaking to the Gentiles. And one of the first things that they're telling the Gentiles, you know, people were saying, oh, you have to do the physical law like we did. You have to get circumcised. And, and one, one person did it just, okay, you can't listen to me unless, unless I'm circumcised. Okay, I'll get circumcised. But what they what people are made now to understand and and it was explained to me this way the law is in i don't have to look outside at a list um of do's and don'ts and figure out well can i do this can i you know it's like one from column a two from, from column b like a chinese restaurant no the law is in and when you think about when they received the holy spirit they went out they preached the gospel I don't see what Peter was a big liar. Uh, Paul was, uh, you know, running around. Well, he wasn't. He wouldn't run around with the ladies. Uh, you, you, um, you look at you look at the ten um, taking each other's wives. It wasn't nothing like that. And in fact, what they told the um, what they told uh, the the Gentiles, flee fornication. Don't have nothing to do with it. And you can understand spiritually that Yahshua has one bride and he is very careful and loving to his bride. He's not going, well, I'm Episcopalian now. Oh, wait a moment. Now I'm going to hang out with the Hindus. No, he's chosen one and he's bringing, he's bringing up his, his bride with love and tenderness. And it says, you know, love your wives as Yahshua loved the assembly. How do you love the assembly? He died for it. And you can just see under the law, you can see how he treated his bride, took her when she was in jeopardy, took her to the to the Red Sea, opened the war, opened the, the walls of the water, had her walk across on dry ground. It reminds me of uh it used to be like in the old fashioned books and everything, that the streets were muddy and a man would lay down his his uh, cloak so that a woman would walk and she wouldn't get her 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 shoes messed up because of the, the stuff that's on the street. He 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 fed her in an air. He took her to a, a bad area. He fed her. He dressed her. He clothed her. He cared for her all those 40 years. And he put like he stayed with her at all times. You know, some people they get married and you know they disappear. You know, well, I got what I wanted. Bye. I got, got, got my green card. Gotta go. <laughs> he did not do that. He he put he gave them a nightlight. They were always in the light. They were always taken care of by their husband. And not only that, because I know people like to live together, and it's like well, you know it does. You don't have to have a piece of paper. Well, you know what the piece of paper does. It says to the world, it says to the government, it says to the world, we are together and we care for each other. Not only that, and you don't have to have no big ceremony. The name is given. He gave his name to his people. So much so that when they're getting ready to come out and they meet Rahab, I know you're Yahweh's people. You know what I'm saying? They, the woman, the way our society is, and not all societies are like that, 
the way our society is, you are completely, the woman is completely immersed in her heart. I did this to somebody once and they were insulted, but it wasn't meant as an insult. You are completely immersed in your husband's name. If I marry James Jones, I am Mrs. James Jones. I don't even have to put my name. Lenore don't have nothing to do with it. Mrs. James Jones. I am completely baptized in his name. And that's what that's what we physically do. You come together and you the name is given. And then when a child comes forth, it's like, well, what is it? It's gonna be baby James. I mean baby Jones. I don't know what girl, boy. It's gonna be a baby Jones. And we had, and to me when I was growing up, it was so easy, Mr. and Mrs., Mr. and Mrs. Now everybody gotta be an individual. We have been made one. So you get together in the flesh, you get married, you get together in the, in the flesh, you have one name. What's that name? James Jones. So I'm just trying to show you that it's talking, it's when he talks about when you receive the Holy Spirit, you're filled. Do people make mistakes? Yes, but what's the difference? You accept the chastisement. It's not like, well, this is the way I am. Uh-uh, that's wrong. I got to turn from that. Uh, yes, some, you had a question, Dr. Baker? Um, you took too long. My dementia kicked in. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's okay. That was beautiful. I, I like that analogy. I'm sorry. Does anybody it was like something? It was something about the about your... Uh, your body is swept and garnished. It has something to do with that sentence that we read. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd like to know about that too. Yeah, that it says you're swept and garnished, and then they had to take even stronger guys to come in and to. So, anybody got an answer to that? Because I don't understand completely. That means that means they wasn't able to sin anymore. Does that mean, I don't understand. I don't even know how to ask the question. I have to ask Yahweh to help me ask the question because I don't even know how to ask it. I know how to ask that question because that's my question. What does it mean that they were swept and garnished and they were doing fine? Well, this is before they received the Holy Spirit. Right. And, then, and then what happens is um that negative spirit, whatever it is, you know, uh, whatever. So jealousy. they didn't sin anymore after that. Well, I mean, well, is that back, a guarantee? It came back. The, the negative, the satanic spirit had tried to go back into that body. Oh, I can't go in. I need help. Then they said, go. Well, they went to the ministry, and then the ministry oh. came, and then they were able to come back in. But I would like a better explanation. Um, Dr. Frank Lewis, you got anything to say? Well, that, uh, well, she asked two things, but he was talking about it, and that was like Matthew 12, 43. But the other thing was worked with yesterday at the, uh, at the end of class a little bit with uh, sin, and she talked about that also, which is a long subject. I mean, <laughs> that's a three-letter word, but uh, I'm telling you, you could go hours and hours if you wanted to talk about sin, really. But uh, um, um, so yeah, he Matthew twelve forty three is one place that he was going to. I think uh, we went. We talked about this the last time we covered it a little bit. I mean, we can't even. Uh, uh, because we started in um, well, read Matt. We didn't do this last time, so I guess. Read uh, Matthew 12 and about uh, 25 or 26, something like that. 12, 25. 12, 22. 22. Hold on, I gotta get my Bible. I was cleaning it, it's on the floor. Okay. I apologize. I don't have to apologize. I'm ready now. Matthew 12, 22. Yeah, that'd be fine, I guess. Matthew okay. 12 and 22 says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with demon, 
blind, and dumb, and he healed him, and so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And okay, so people, here a guy's got a demon. Now, you know, holy names, I mean, King James says devil. And he, he explained that in the lecture. He said, uh, there's only one devil. And those uh, <clears throat> angels that were cast out uh, out of heaven, uh, they've been demoted, so now they're demons. So here he is casting the demon out. The person was blind and dumb. Now the person can see and can speak. <laughs> and the demon's cast out of them. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? Mm -hmm. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doth not cast out demons except by Bezebub, the prince of the demons. So they're saying the only reason he can cast out demons because he's got, he's Beelzebub, he's the prince of the demons. He's one of them. Yeah, he's saying that's why he can cast out demons. Now this is what Joshua tells him. They can't do it. So when they see him, they're jealous and they're accusing him of doing it, of what he is. And they don't realize that's what they, <laughs> they're being deceived by as demons. It's a great mystery. Read on. And Yahshua knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. <clears throat> And you see, and you see that, don't you? Sometimes people have, I mean, just like you had a civil war in the United States. And just like right now, you see how divided it is? Yes. It's amazing. People just can't stand up for truth or, you know, uh, speak up when something's wrong. They just follow the party line. And that's the way it is in this. That's what's happened in the school, even. Uh, read on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 26 verse. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How so? And how shall then his kingdom stand? Yeah, see, if Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. How shall then shall his kingdom stand? So that's what they were saying. The only reason you're casting out demons is because you're the prince of them, Beelzebub. That's how you cast them out, the prince of the demons. Read. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do you children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But <laughs> Now he tells them what the reality of it is. Read. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of Elohim, then the kingdom of Elohim is come unto you. Now, again, it's not devils. Those are demons. Uh, he said he said that in the lecture, and he said it many times right. that there's only one devil. You understand? But those angels uh, that were cast out him, they're demons, but they do think like he does. In other words, they're liars too. You understand? And they're causing people to be deceived. See, and so if he, if I cast out demons by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom of Yahweh has come unto you. And then uh, you know how we talk about in uh, it's in the Bible that Romans uh, fourteen seventeen the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So see, the demons have to be cast out, then you can receive okay. the Holy Spirit, and that's what this lecture is about: is that you can't have the demons in there and the Holy Spirit at the same time. You understand? So once you get the Holy Spirit, you autom automatically, those demons are gone. And that's what he was saying. He okay. was saying, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, there really ain't no room for the devil. Because okay. you're filled. You understand? Just like a glass is filled. But yeah. sometimes yeah. people aren't uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. So there's plenty of room. <laughs> for those demons. You understand? Okay. So uh, so uh, in uh, in the moderation or I believe or the uh aims, it says Lucifer, Satan, the devil, and its demons. So it's only one right. devil. Yeah. I got that's you. Right. Gotcha. Good point. That's right. That's the seventh thing. 
operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Mm-hmm. What that means is there's six dispensations in time, and and the next dispensation is the seventh dispensation, and he he's going to be cast in the lake of fire with his the devil his. Uh, Angels, demons, those demons, those souls that have been, you know, uh, uh, and then you don't have that hindrance like you do now. Right. You understand? Yeah. Uh, and that's what makes it, uh, uh, well, makes it eternal bliss and joy and and happiness and righteousness in the kingdom. You can have that now, but uh, you ain't going to have a physical body nor the devil to deal with. <laughs> So it's going to be, uh, well, uh, there's nothing no better than to receive etern- immortal glorification and be one of his angels, giving him praise throughout eternity. You don't want no parts of eternal pain, torment, and suffering. We've all suffered things. We've all had pain. And you don't want no eternity of it. Uh, guarantee you that. Uh, and I remember an example of cats and dogs being in one box. Somebody got to go because they ain't going to be in there together to get along. So <laughs> the cat got to go or the dog got to go. So that's in other words, you can't have the devil and Yahshua in, in that one box. Occupying the same space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Occupying the same space. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and, and it's, the, and it's and, the gospel that cast them out. In Romans, uh, I mean, uh, Mark 15, 16, 15, he said, uh, go into all the world, telling his disciples right before he ascends, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Them that believe and are baptized shall be saved. Them that believe not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall you cast out demons. So you see how the preaching of the gospel in the name of Yahshua can cast out demons? Mm-hmm. And if you, it says, he that believeth and is baptized. Well, what are you baptized with? You believe the gospel, you're baptized with the Holy Spirit now. But them that believe not shall be damned. You see how important the gospel is? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and how it needs to be preached? Because mm-hmm. you're either saved to it or you're damned by it if you don't believe it. See, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall you cast out demons. So you see how the... Mm-hmm. Uh, demons are cast out by the preaching of the gospel and they shall speak with new tongues when you have the holy spirit you ain't speaking diff- you're speaking different <laughs> than the world and and what you was once uh speaking you understand mm-hmm. and then says they shall take up serpents that don't mean you start taking up snakes but that's what people do they look they read the bible and say see if we believe we're supposed to take up serpents and many people's died done doing that. <laughs> if they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them. Let's drink poison, see if it'll kill us. You understand? That's stupid. Uh, but you know, they read things in the Bible, and since you're carnal minded, you're going to take, uh, you're going to look at it physically. Now, uh, we just kind of, t- <laughs> boy, get to tw- 43rd verse, 20. 20- 1243 because that's where the part is and he said this is before he poured out the holy spirit because when he pours out the holy spirit that's on a permanent basis back then okay you might as well read it he says it it's a it's a matthew 12 yeah okay i had the wrong one matthew (laughs) and dr um i think dr lewis has a question civil lewis Mark, Matthews 12 and 43 says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Mm Mm-hmm. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Now he's saying this wicked. And we learned what this is too. 
this wicked mm -hmm. generation. That means the ones present before he dies. <laughs> you understand? Because after he dies, he's bringing an end to all the generation of the flesh when he dies. He's nailing the flesh to the cross. He's nailing fleshly worship to the cross. See, and so he, when he was in a physical body, yeah, he did them physical things, but it was to fulfill the physical carnal ordinances that were under the law. But after his death, burial, resurrection, after he's resurrected, his body's not physical anymore. You understand? Then when he ascends and pours out the Holy Spirit, it's showing how that you can be uh, uh, brought into the, you got to be born again by the Holy Spirit and then you're uh, part of his spiritual body. See? So then you won't be doing physical things. So when you're doing physical things that he fulfilled, that's a sin saying you can be water baptized and, and or you can eat Lord's suppers, you can pay tithes and offerings and, and you can go to the, you can be in the kingdom. You understand? Uh, that is a sin because you're transgressing the law of the spirit that the Holy Spirit's been poured out and it ain't about them physical things no more. You understand? And there's a lot of other physical things people hold on to. And matter of fact, you might as well get the place where he so he's saying that, you know, and, and also that happened. I mean, he cast out demons during his ministry. He healed people of all manner of diseases. But when it came time, when they asked him, who do you want, Barabbas or Yahshua? They all said Barabbas. Barabbas. They, they riled the people up. You see how they riled the people up? Even though the demons cast out, those religious leaders had them saying, oh, yeah, we want Barabbas. And say, what should happen to this Yahshua? Crucify him. All of them said that. So yeah, because now they that, got those legions in them now. Uh, yeah, you see how they got back in there? <laughs> and they got and they got persuaded by the religious leaders. Well, what do you think it is now? <laughs> it's even worse. You understand? Especially around now. They still giving that lie about Santa Claus gonna come. You understand? Santa Claus is all over the place. They got so many Santa Claus in every different town, and they's over at the mall, and they's over Santa Claus over here and over there. How can Santa Claus? How's there so many Santa Clauses? Because it's a lie. And black ones too. Oh man, right. we, I was, we were we were watching Fox one time, and the girl goes, uh, 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 "Black Santa? No, there ain't no black Santa. They're supposed to be what? It was Santa's wife." <laughs> Santa could be any color you want him to be because he's a lot imagination. Anyway, and come to terrible. find out, Santa's name is like Satan, S A T A N. That's right. Yeah, yeah if you just move one letter, that's right. Okay, that's right. Let's go. Uh, so another place he was going to was First John uh, three verse four, and this is what defines what sin is, and this is what he was showing. And we were reading this yesterday, matter of fact. First John three and four. Yeah. First John three, verse four. That says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's and right. Knows. So now it says, whoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now that's what, so that's defining sin in the Bible. And that's why when Adam was told, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die, uh, when he ate, he died. <laughs> that's, a, that's a spiritual death that happened to Adam. That means he transgressed the law because the law was, Yah, it said Yah in Genesis 2 16 17 it said Yahweh commanded Yahweh Elohim commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you freely eat, but tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat. For the day you do, you'll surely die. Did he eat? Yeah. So that means he transgressed the law Yahweh gave him. So he died spiritually and psychologically that day. Uh, okay. Uh, now read on there. But then there's hope because Yahshua Messiah, one man died to bring sin in the world and one man's dying to take it out. That's Yahshua the Messiah. And they're not the same one. Yahshua's not a sinner. It takes one without sin to take away the sin. 
Read. First John 3 and the fifth verse. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. So if he came to take away the sin, and that's what John 129 says, uh, John the Baptist said, it was said, the next day John seeth Yahshua and said, Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, so Yahshua's coming to take away the sin of the world. And that's the sin from of Adam and you understand, but he also in the Corinthians, you know, when it talks about the gospel, he died for our sins according to the scriptures. You understand? So he's dying for the sin from Adam and the sins that the children of Israel were under under the law, because it was a law of sin and death. He gave them commandments, they couldn't keep it, so they're sinners. And and so he died to take it away, you know, or died for their sins. Okay. Uh, and so Dr. Kinley said uh, he, he he got me, he's a, he's out of the sinning business with, with Yahshua. <laughs> you know, Yahshua, there's no sin in him. In other words, never has yes. been, never will be. You understand? He's obedient. You know, that's the Holy Spirit. You understand? Uh, uh, and 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 the true worshippers worship in spirit and in truth. So when you're not doing that, you're transgressing. Uh, uh, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Yahshua Messiah. And that's what it says in John, well, Romans 8 yeah. and 1 says, wherefore now there is no condemnation to them that are in Yahshua Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua Messiah hath made me free from the law of sin and death. See, Paul was under that law. And he says the uh, law of sin and death. He was under the old covenant. And he was wrong even after the Holy Spirit was poured out. But he did it in ignorance. And he blasphemed, but he was but he was corrected. And it's in he told Timothy, it's in Timothy that uh, uh, this is worthy of all acceptation that Yahshua, oh, I might as well, since you got that, made me free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, and it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us well what's that the rights of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh that's the physical things but after the spirit mm -hmm. see that's the chain you know the law is the holy spirit being fulfilled or filling you up and that's what he was saying See, wasn't they filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance? That's what uh, Pentecost is talking about. And one of the places he used to move out the satanic spirit, he used to use 2 Thessalonians about, hmm, it's about two and, well, you could probably start at seven there, but it, there's a lot in this, uh, but we can't, <laughs> uh, well, it's sitting you know, uh, yeah, he says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already wit work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And and Dr. Kinley said that was John, <laughs> the apostle John. <laughs> but anyway, says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. See, and, and, and whom Yahweh or Yahshua shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. See how the preaching of the gospel when he's telling you the truth and, and, and proving it by the law and the prophets and giving you witnesses and destroy with the brightness of his coming. In other words, the more that you learn about him, it, the brighter it gets your understanding of Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. And you know, that that's why he taught it. And what it does, it moves them satanic spirits out. And then you receive the Holy Spirit. That's what he said, because it's so bright. You understand? And then the mm -hmm. demons are in darkness and he's just illuminating you. And, and so it gets these revelations just get, I mean, this vision and revelation, it just gets brighter and brighter in you till till those things are moved out and you become what you're supposed to be, which is the son of Yahweh with the, so Yahshua being the, Holy the light Spirit. overtook that darkness and those that's, spirits, that's those not. demons just cannot stay. That's what right. Like. That's okay. the point. Okay. okay. Then it says, even him who's coming after the working of Satan with all deceivable, deceivable, uh, 
working Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And I'll never forget, I always liked that when he, in his lecture, when he took lying wonders and he said, he's a wonderful liar. He's an eloquent liar. He's a mag magnificent liar. He's an academically trained liar. In other words, they went to school and done studied the Bible, and they just still lying mm -hmm. to the people. You understand? It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. You know, uh, you have to have a vision, revelation, don't you? Right. You understand? Uh, and people's had vision, but they didn't get the revelation, or they wouldn't be changing things. Right. And with all right. deceitfulness of unrighteous in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So you have to love the truth. There's salvation in the truth. See, the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, since they didn't receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, for this cause shall Yahweh send them a strong delusion that they should be believe a lie. After you're being told these things and you want to keep on going, when you have a sufficient amount of intelligence to comprehend the purpose of Yahweh, when it's told you in simplicity and truth, yeah, he'll send you a strong delusion so you can believe a lie. You'll think what you're teaching is right when you're going against what the Holy Spirit say. And that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see how important it is there? Uh, so there's this, this subject is just really just, yeah, the sin thing is just too big. I mean, it's it would take all day and i think you want to go into the transcript really <laughs> but there you'll read i mean see when you go to the law and the prophets see adam did bring sin in the world yahweh give the, the children of israel a law did they keep it no so they're sinners they transgress he told them don't have no other elohim they was out there building a golden calf you understand they built two golden calves in first kings the well 12th chapter See, that, that that serpent that they did in the wilderness, they were worshiping that. That's in Second, I think second Chronicles 18. Anyway, or Kings 1 in them places, they was worshiping that serpent on the pole. Yeah. Then they're making their own idols. You understand? That's all the way. Now that's sinning all the way down. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you, well, anyway. And then you have Daniel 9.24. That's what that prophecy. You might as well get that part. Uh, Daniel 9.24. Uh, just because it's telling you the prophecy of what Yahshua the Messiah is going to do. And, and the time he's going to come in. See, Daniel 9. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, you're fine. No, go ahead. I'll do the transcript. Okay. Daniel 9.24 says, 70 weeks of years are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to restrain transgression. Okay, okay, okay. Now, the, the holy name is okay for the 70 uh -huh. weeks of years because 70 times 7 is 490. But this, right. you know... We'll do, the, you know we'll, we'll do the King James Version. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. To finish the transgression. Now you see where it, it says finish the transgression. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I you restrain, I don't understand why you change things. But the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit says finish the transgression, because when Yahshua Messiah is on the cross dying for the sin of the world, he says in John 1930, it is finished. <laughs> he didn't say it is restrained. <laughs> And what he's talking about, so he's finishing the transgression. He's dying for but the he sin. He says of the world. to restrain the transgression. That's two different meanings, right? Well, that's the point. So you want finish the transgression. Read on. And to make an end of sins, and to he's make dying for the sins. sins. But what is this guy? He just says, "Oh, it's just make an end of sin offerings." But we still got to keep feast days and keep the Sabbaths. That's no. what that's what he believes. That's why he, you know he's changing things in there. But Yash yes. was making an end of sins. It didn't, Doctor Kinley. You've heard him say it. I think we read it. I don't know this time, but we read it before where he said he's taken man out. He, he's he's out of the sinning business, right? Yes. Yes, right. Uh, mm. 
but the devil, he's the man of sin. So what's he going to do? Have you do, he go against whatever Yahweh or Yahshua says? He going to say something different. You understand? Open and for deceive business. you with it, huh? Open and for to make an end of sins. Oh, right to make an end of sins. Read on. Mm -hmm. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. See, you can be wrong. You could be uh, deceived by the satanic spirit, but by the preaching of the gospel, he can cast those demons out. You can receive the Holy Spirit. Reconciliation for iniquity. He can reconcile those that were wrong to be right. You understand? Mm. So read on. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. See what he's doing? This is all prophesying of Yahshua what he's going to do. And then them Jews out there, they got the scriptures and they say he hadn't come yet. <laughs> you done messed up on this scripture. You understand? <laughs> uh, to bring in everlasting righteousness. Isn't that what the kingdom is? Uh, Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking. It's not doing them physical things or baptisms or keeping Sabbaths, whatever you want to do naturally or paying tithes. The kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And you see the devil got people praying that prayer. The Lord, uh, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And they don't understand. They're praying for the kingdom to come. And it came on the day of Pentecost. And started the present kingdom age. You see how the devil got. And he says our father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. And they don't want to use his name. They don't, mm. He's saying holy is his name. But uh, we're not using it. We're going to say Lord God. Or Jehovah instead. Uh, well anyway. Bring in everlasting righteousness. Read on. And to seal up the vision. And prophesy. And to anoint. Uh, prophecy. The uh, and Pro seal up prophecy. the vision. And prophecy. So that whole thing is written by a vision. So he's sealing it up. It was testifying of him. See, and he's fulfilling the law and the prophecy. See, he's mm -hmm. sealing it up. That's what everything was talking about. Was he, didn't he say in John 5, 39, search the scriptures for them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. See, mm -hmm. and he came and fulfilled the scripture. See, he's sealing up the vision. Uh, read on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to seal up the vision and prophesy, prophecy, prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore yeah. and understand. Yeah. Anoint the most holy. He's pouring out the Holy Spirit in man's heart and mind. Ain't that anointing? <laughs> yeah, that's the Holy Spirit being poured out. Um, so therefore, anyway, do you see how he's bring, taking the sin out of the world? See, uh, mm -hmm. but but after the cross. So Dr. Kinley in this lecture here, he says, uh -huh. uh, well, shall we, well, <laughs> read, uh, read John, uh, no, Romans 5, there's so much. Uh, well, read Romans 3.23, I think it is. 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh. Yeah, now that's that's so everybody's done wrong and come short uh, of the glory of Yahweh. But what does it say? For all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Yahshua the Messiah. Yeah, now get Romans about five and nineteen or something like that. 21, something like it. 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. See, that one man's disobedience was Adam. Many were made sinners. By the obedience of one, that's Joshua Messiah, many be made righteous. See, read on. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, that all that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through. You skip grace, 
You didn't read, but yeah. where sin abounded, you didn't read that. But more, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Mm -hmm. That as sin hath reigned unto death, because from the fall of Adam, man was dead spiritually, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahshua right. Messiah, our Savior, right? Yes. Then yes, the sir. next chapter says this. What shall we say then? Yeah. Shall we and, continue and he, always, he, always used to, he always used to say that. Get Romans <laughs> 6, and they say, what shall we say then? Would you start a conversation? What shall we say then? <laughs> what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound by no means That's how right. shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein yes yeah, so you not. Mm -hmm. so no, you see not. that there's a lot so you see that there's a lot of uh there, he's talking about well should we just if there's no sin then we can just do what we want there and he said, uh, Yahweh forbid. Now read 23, the last verse of that. The 23rd verse says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. So for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. So that's the payment for sin is death. But we have a gift, you know, believe in Yahshua the Messiah. You understand that he is our salvation and that he did. Uh, you understand that's the gospel being preached. There's good news. You don't have to continue uh, being lied to and, and calling him a liar by doing physical things that he fulfilled. There's a lot to it, ain't it? Uh, There's a lot. Uh, but the, it's, it's a gift. Uh, so now also. Uh, Excuse me, can I well, just say one thing? Sorry. Sure. I'm sorry. I just yeah. say it gives you the courage of your convictions. And if you're going to look when Dr. Kinley did talk about that, Peter, I never knew him. And he started cursing and yelling and screaming. Then he went away crying. He was cursing and saying, I didn't know. But saying, well, you sound just like him. Then don't you know him? I saw you with him. No, nope, I don't know him. Then when he receives the Holy Spirit, He's ready to go up against the powers that be and say, hey, by the power in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, that's how this man is, is raised from, from being a, a, a cripple. So he's got the courage of his convictions. So that's what happened. And one more thing, uh, I don't want to forget that Dr. Um, I think Lewis, Dr. Sybil Lewis has a question. So I'm sorry to interrupt. No problem. Uh, we were, uh, I, I, like I said, this sin thing's a big uh, subject. <laughs> and, and can I say this? It looked like almost every uh, paragraph in this uh, book of Romans 7, they all got the word sin in it, if you read on down. Yeah. Like, uh, the ninth, mm -hmm. Well, I, the ninth verse, well, I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, yeah, yeah, the you're in the seventh chapter, and she's in the sixth chapter, and even the sixth chapter, it's, you know, that what she's got there in six and six, knowing mm -hmm. this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin see how it's through the holy spirit now for he that is dead is freed from sin <laughs> see you have to die in other words you understand uh, in other words there's a new man rather than the old man but there's so much in the bible as we've said but i, I uh we didn't, I want to finish that one thing in 1 John 3. And then we also have 1 John 5, 17, because it talks about what sin is. But can I ask you, Dr. Lewis, before you run uh, for Romans 8, because the, the Holy Name Bible says, there is therefore no condemnation. But I think the King James may say, there is therefore now no condemnation. That's right. And that's the correct thing, because in the age and dispensation that we're in, uh it's after 
uh, Yahshua has died for the sins, buried, resurrected, ascent. And see, when he dies for the sins and that and that body's buried, he didn't resurrect that body. So that's sin being consumed. You understand? He's taken away the sin. You understand? Or the sins of the world. When he resurrects, he resurrects without sin. He resurrects a different body. See that? Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, he ascends and pours out the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit will take it away from you. <laughs> that's right. So it's therefore now there is no, that's right. King James is correct. The holy name taken out now, even taken out one word. It's a, that, that messes the whole thing up because he's in the, he's in the age of grace now. He's saying therefore. And that's what the seventh chapter was about. It was about Paul before he received the Holy Spirit. He's talking about how he, he he tried to do good but couldn't. That which he wouldn't do, he was doing. That which he should have done, he wasn't doing. You understand? Because he was persecuting the assembly. He hadn't received the Holy Spirit yet. He was lied to, saying the disciples stole his body away. So he, you know, so he's out there persecuting. You understand? Uh, but then when Yahshua appeared to him and revealed himself to him, and it was read yesterday by uh, Dr. Grayson there. <laughs> <laughs> about how and I, I knew that that word now was very important in that eighth chapter in the Holy Name Bible. Oh yeah, for sure. That's right. It's not in there. I added it. <laughs> well, yeah, you're supposed to. You know, so you can't always just go with what the. That's why we use two Bibles. That's what right. one doesn't have, the other one has, and you know, other and vice versa. And sometimes, anyway, uh, you can see corrections there. Okay, First John, the, you can keep the charts. First John, the third, uh, was it three? And so the dispensation ages, we're in a different dispensation age now, but the age that we're in is still the same. Holy Spirit was poured out, so you're going to still say what the Holy Spirit said. You got the first John, we had first John three and four that where it says uh, sin is the transgression of the law. But keep reading that. So that's first John three and four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Now you see that? So he says that those that uh, uh, if you're in him, you have no sin because you're born of him and you have uh, and, and since he was was without sin and he's not a sinner, then if he's in you, you're not a sinner. <laughs> That's the point. You understand you're in the spiritual body. But if you haven't, it says if you are sinning, then you haven't seen him. You understand? You haven't received the Holy Spirit yet. You don't have a vision and revelation from the Holy Spirit. Read on. Mm -hmm. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever mm -hmm. abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. Little children. Eternal life to know. Read on. Little children. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Now you see who commits sin? You're of the devil. And you know the world out there, I mean, they like to say that. Uh, uh, well, some people even, uh, well, you know, say, I'm a believing sinner. You understand? I remember I was at a Baptist church and a guy said, uh, we got the Holy Spirit, but uh, but it's sin that's that's hindering us from really understanding. You understand? He just said, "Whosoever is whoever whoever sinneth is of the devil." <laughs> you understand? <laughs> People don't like to read. They ain't reading that in the church, are they? And they a Roman Catholic church. They got you confessing your sins to a priest, and he's a bigger sinner than you are. You understand? Uh, they definitely don't understand, do they? What does 1 John 5 and 17 say? 
5 and 17 says, all unrighteousness is sin. So and you there see is all a sin. unrighteousness. So when you ain't right, that's what sin is in this age. <laughs> because unrighteous means you're not right. Uh, righteousness, uh, you see it right there. Romans, you see kingdom of Yahshua. You see how he got Romans 14, 17 there right under it. That's, and we've already quoted that a bunch of times. Now I'll just read the last verse of uh, James, the fourth chapter. And then the last verse of Romans 14. Chapter. You want the last scripture we read? Move on. The, the last yeah. scripture read in James, the first chapter? Fourth chapter, last verse. The fourth? Four. Okay, so that is, here, here we go. Here we go. It says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Now you see that? See, when you're told to do good, you know that what to do is right, but you don't do it. You do something else. To him, it is sin. You understand? See, and that's on this side of the cross. So there's a lot of stuff in the Bible. Huh? This, here, you know, might James after, 4 and 17. You might, so, oh yeah. you might now, be after this. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the air of his way that's, of his that's James 5 19, I think. Uh 520. Yeah. I just read this one 4 and 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. That's right. Uh, okay. so you gotta know what's right. And and when you do it, you gotta do what's right. <laughs> you can't turn away and do what's wrong. You understand? Uh, okay um, yeah and one she had before that just go ahead and read that if uh, James 5 and 19 and come down okay James 5 and 19 brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So you see that? You can err from the truth, but you can be corrected. You understand? And, and that soul can be saved. <laughs> you see that? Uh, there's And it hide a multitude of sins, see? Uh, so that's why it's important to preach the gospel and try to help somebody. You understand? If you've been helped. Okay. Do you have... Uh, um, Frank, this is the one, is there one more verse there, isn't it? And I got, I got to leave. I, mean, I want you all to read the train. Well, that was the, that was the last one. That's okay, the last, that's fine. So just read your one. Romans four, fourteen twenty three, and then First Corinthians. Uh, we'll, we'll get that. Now I got, well, you know, it, I mean, it's just too much, really. <laughs> Subject's okay. a little bit too long here. Romans 14 and 23 says, and he that doubleth is damned if he eat. No, he, he that doubteth. Doubt, doubt it. And what he that say? doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So what, a, what is not of faith is sin. Well, who's faith? That's Joshua. So whatever is not of Yahshua, <laughs> that's sin. You're going to be transgressing or going against him. You understand? Because you don't have the Holy Spirit. See? And, and But the devil, he'll have you think you have the Holy Spirit when you don't. You understand? That's his job. First John, well, First Corinthians 6. Read the ninth verse. And then uh, 10. Uh, First Corinthians 6 and 19. What? No, six and nine. Six and nine says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor self-abusers 
nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Now you see that if you're unrighteous and, and, and you're doing these things physically and spiritually. <laughs> you ain't going to inherit the kingdom that way. You know, and we've all been wrong about things. You understand? Mm -hmm. But this, this is the place to get right. Read on. Mm -hmm. You won't and inherit the kingdom doing that. You're not going to receive eternal such, life. Read on. And such were some of you. But they now such were some of us. So some of that we've done before. Some of the some such of that some of some of you that happened to you. You was like you that uh, that could have been you. Uh, some of them things. You understand? When you examine yourself. Read on. And such were some of you. But now ye are washed. But now ye are sanctified. But now ye are justified in the name of the Savior, Yahshua. And by the Spirit you can, be clean, you can be cleaned up by the name of Yahshua Messiah and the Spirit, it says. And the Spirit of our Elam. The Holy Spirit can change you, save you. You understand? Uh, clean you up. And then you're going to be trying to tell somebody else about the thing that helped you out. Now, like she was getting with 1 Corinthians 6, 19, people don't read 18. Mm -hmm. They don't know that that much. Read that. Flee, flee, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Now it says every sin that a man committeth is without the body. You understand? People think, oh, that's just my body doing that. You understand? No, it's the spirit and soul told you to do that. You understand? So that's the sin that you commit. It's without the body. It's what's inside telling your body what to do convincing you to do things that ain't right so there's a lot it's a long subject i apologize for taking all that time for that but they did ask about the sin so we did talk about it a little bit you apology not accepted thank you for <laughs> so people there are other people that they've got the transcript and there's other people that uh wanted to say something so i don't yeah. want them to be able to say something Praise Joshua. Okay, Teresa. Are we ready? Well, they Sybil had something to say, and I thought I heard Ruth. I'll pass. Okay, so start at now. I want to go. I'm to sorry, the... I, was it Ruth? Did Ruth, did you have anything? I did, but it's probably going to take Frank all the way to 1 o'clock. <laughs> so I'll let you go ahead and finish this. Well, since you're here, why don't you just do it? And we've got nothing but time. Well, <clears throat> this is a continuing is story. Uh, Frank. Yeah. Frank. I guess I asked a good question, huh? <laughs> uh, yes, Ruth. I can, we can, you're a little muffled, but. What I want to know is, okay, you were answering uh, her question about the two spirits in the body and and half and in the that um, those demons need to be cast out of us, and the only way they can be cast out of is coming to class, right? So, um, the demons that are being cast out of us are they there? because of the influences that we ran into before we came to class or are they there from birth? Well, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's, I've heard, uh, well, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, well, I'll say this. There's one lecture. I remember, I remember, uh, well, that's one of the doctrines that's being taught in the, well, one of the doctrine that's taught uh, when back in the 90s and whatever with the fallen angels, 1989, whatever. 
And they would say that really what happened is while, while you were in the waiting room, uh, the waiting room means those demons were waiting for you and they incarnated right at birth. And uh, I went and tried to do some research on that, what Dr. Kinley said. And he did say if, 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 if one uh, did incarnate you that early, he said they're very hard to cast out. Mm -hmm. um, but they got they got you being your soul is a demon that is your soul but that's not true it's Yahweh that gives you life breath and all things you know the, the devil incarnates and that he's able to influence you and uh, uh, it's kind of like a, a couple examples are like uh, the the Israelites are in bondage to the Egyptians are they Egyptians no, they're Israelites. So your soul can be influenced by demons, but your soul is not a demon. You understand? But they're under their control and they're, you're being deceived by them. Uh, and it's just like when we drink alcohol. See, uh, if I drink alcohol, I mean, when I'm okay, I, when I'm not under the influence of alcohol, I'm, you know, reg, you know, I can walk right and talk right and so on and so on. But, you know, when you can get drunk and sometimes you've heard people being mean drunks and <laughs> their behavior changes and, you know, you might think you can drive good, but you're over there swaying on the road. You understand? You might think there's nothing wrong with you, but it, it changes your behavior. But you're not alcohol. You're under the influence. And it took it took the liver to cast the alcohol out of you. So the liver is Yahshua. He's the one that's going to cast them demons out of us. He's the one living. He's the resurrection, the life. So uh, uh, boy, now I've, I don't went off on that. I can't remember why I'm doing it. <laughs> well, oh, so there are some from birth. But so the main thing is, is that I, I believe that uh, a baby's innocent you understand but it is by the things that we learn later on i mean you know there's also an age of accountability you know the way we've been raised up i mean hey if you've been raised up okay like uh, in my case my parents made me go to church i went to church and i uh, heard about jesus and i went to communicants class and it learned to eat the lord's supper and i was baptized as a baby uh, my parents said, uh, you better be good or Santa Claus ain't going to come. They told me about the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy, you know. And uh, but uh, and so, you know, then you find out later. Well, really. And then uh, but it didn't stop me from, you know, getting high and getting drunk and just doing crazy things, you know, as a teenager and into college. And, you know, just uh, we've all made errors. You understand? So uh, I know when I come to class, I had it. I was I needed a lot of help, <laughs> and this teaching is you can sit down and it will change you. You understand? But I'll say this: I was in the class three months. I was learning a lot of stuff. I went to these conventions, and I'm thinking I know all kind of stuff. I'm thinking I have the Holy Spirit, and I was just, I was, I, I was worse off than I was when I first come in. Uh, it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes a long time to be cleaned up. Uh, but that's my testimony. I, you know, it could be somebody else's a different one. You understand? But they're really good at uh, trying to think you're something when you're not. <laughs> and you ain't even gone by the pattern. You ain't even been burned up at the altar yet. You ain't even washed and cleaned yet. But you out there thinking you got in the most holy place. You got the Holy Spirit. And don't realize you run around the court roundabout <laughs> or, or the court without. So uh, uh, there he said there is a case where he said that they do. They can get in a birth, but I, they're not the ones that give you life. You understand? Uh, and so whenever they do incarnate and they and, and it says all have sinned. And it also says he deceiveth the whole world. So all of us was wrong. And so when he says you come into class with a, 
what does he say? A carnal mind, a satanic spirit, and a physical body. Well, that's how we come in. You did have it some kind of, or you were influenced by the wrong thing. And those are demons uh, that have you believe in lies and telling lies. You understand? And so it takes a while to be cleaned up. So hopefully that helped a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, it did. The one thing that you said that really helped when you said the devil can't give you life and he can't. So it's, how is he going to bring you in the world? You know? That's right. Yeah. I always looked at it the way they said, they said, you know, that they, it, you got a negative threefold entity and he can't, that's what you got at birth. Well, then what you're telling me is the devil gives life and that's crazy. Right. You know, and, and when somebody would die, you think, you, you think anybody would die because then demons would get in their bodies and keep on living, <laughs> you know, but he ain't never taught it that way. Thank That's so right. Much. Thanks, Frank. Thanks. Praise you, Asher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now this is Adna, and now that we've gone there, I guess I kind of need an understanding because <clears throat> I know of others that um, has been abused, um, has been abused uh, physically so and really mentally so. And they've been to class, they come to class, uh, their parents also been in class, so the children now. But now you're saying that, you know, since these things has happened to me, instead of saying that you know having a a mate for a male you rather have a female uh to be your mate so i just don't know how quite to say it or i just don't know how to explain it to them you know i just don't know how and i'm listening to what you're saying uh it says Adam and Eve, and we know it's not Adam and Steve. Mm -hmm. we, I, I, I know that, you know, so it's man and woman. But they feel that because they've been so abused and they call on Yahshua every day and say, Yahshua, help me. But they're in that situation, but they're steep and deep down in that situation. And, and not just their situation. I just know of others that's just like that. And I just don't know how to walk them through it. And I know I need help uh, from Yashua to show me how to tell them. Actually, and truly and truthfully to come to class so that can be extirpated or him taking it out of you. But I just, um, it just breaks my heart to see that. And see, I, I know some people like that too. And it breaks my heart. Yeah. They won't come to class because of that. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, the, yeah, the thing is, is what's in the Bible about stuff like that? Uh, you know, I mean, we just read one part of it, but th that's right. I tell you, I, I tell you, people see, uh, yeah, satanic spirits do a lot of crazy things. Mm -hmm. And even with, uh, uh, like you're saying with the abuse, you know, uh, uh, That's what he does. there's, yeah, he's, I mean, uh, you're supposed to be loved and nurtured by your parents, <laughs> but, but to have be sexually abused, physically abused and mentally and all those things, it does mess up a mind mm -hmm. and the mind is really messed up and it needs a lot of healing, which is, uh, and that's really what the teaching does. It can heal your soul, no matter what you've been through. In other words, you don't have to be that person or be that, you know. But sometimes even the, uh, the cycle of abuse, you might get abused and then you do it to somebody else when you didn't like it, when you got it happen to you. It's a mess. But anyway, when and, it comes... And, and I do tell them to come to class, or we tell them to come to my sister, myself. Yeah, uh, coming you to know, because it's, it's, right, it's right here in our own family, and we know this. So it, uh, it's, it's very painful because uh, the mom been raised up in the teaching. So, of course, you're going to tell your children, just like we, our children are in class. That's just the way it is. You raise them. 
but then you, we got a big family. So when you try to tell them, just keep coming to class, just keep coming to class, had that chipped away, they just focused on, all I know is I've been abused, I've been raped, blah, 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 it just goes on. It's, it's just stuck in them. You know, that's just got to be uh, extirpated. Or, oh, it's, yeah, it's, the thing it's, is, the thing is, is that, yeah, the thing is you can be healed from within. You know what I'm saying? And, and yes, those things did happen. We've all had a history. We've all been wrong. Ain't nobody. I like Dr. Kinley in the 1958 lecture. He goes, he goes, uh, this is the opening before the opening of the first class. He says, if I wrote a book of my mistakes, it'd be a big book. Mm-hmm. You know, you ever think about how many mistakes we've made? And if we could, if we thought about them or how many kind of things have happened, you know, we've all been wrong. There's nobody, you know, and the thing is, is that uh, how do you want your soul to inhabit eternity? You understand? Yes, it happened. It's in this physical realm. But you better you better be concerned with what's happening after this life. You understand? And uh, those things out in the world, because I, 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 I mean, well, I'll just give you a little testimony because I'm not in that. I wasn't in that realm. But, you know, when Obama uh, said it was all right for homosexuals to get married, I thought he will not win the election. No way. No way. <laughs> I didn't realize how big an influence that is in the world. Yes, I mean, it, it is, is major. It's amazing. See, yeah. and, and, uh, but, the, uh, but the thing is, when you go down through the Bible, uh, Yahweh didn't like it before the law. And that was in uh, Genesis, the 19th chapter. Those guys, they wanted they saw those angels and said we want to have sex with them you bring them out right now and they were angels and yahweh burned that sodom and gomorrah with uh fire and brimstone then in leviticus what is it leviticus is it 1821 read that and there's a bunch of things about sexual stuff you know i mean uh, Dr. Kinley got something yeah. about that in the, in 18, the... 1822. Thou shalt not lie with uh, with mankind as with womankind. It's an abomination. That was against the law to do that, to be a sodomite and all that kind of stuff. He said okay? 1822? Yeah, that's in Leviticus. Okay. That's, a, okay. that's part of the law. And then he says, don't lie with a beast right below that. <laughs> you know, that's confusion. You understand? And they, they told them to kill the beast and the woman. You understand? If they if they lied down with each other. So there's all kind of stuff he doesn't put in the law. I'll say it that way. Oh. Then you go uh, you the know, process. I've heard of that men laying with beasts, like lambs and cows and uh well anyway, he's crazy he's stuff a, like that. Yeah, and Yahweh it, it talks about it there. Okay. Well, I just wanted yeah. to make mention of it because I understand. I, I, we, well, yeah, and 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 I know that they have taken this flag. You know, we have a rainbow, rainbows of many colors. Now they got these flags out with all these colors that uh, is in the rainbow. So they're using that to say that that's you know who they are. We're gay. And I just well, they got, got like, they got six colors in the rainbow when there's seven, so it's shore. showing you that they're fleshly, and that's really the well, whole mm-hmm. point. The gotcha. whole point is people are fleshly and saying this is the way I am. I can't change. That's right. Thank and, you. And, okay. and, and and the thing is, yeah, you well, you're looking at the physical. You can worship Yahweh in spirit and truth. You can change and be filled with the Holy Spirit, but when it says uh, about being filled with the Holy Spirit, it says that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Well, when you say you can't change, what is that? Is it the inside that can't change? Because the inside can change and you can serve Yahweh in spirit and in truth. Instead of being self-serving, you can be creator serving. Oh. And that's it's, it's an obstacle in your mind. 
You understand? And, and, and people just say, well, no, I just can't live that way. Yeah, you can. You just don't, you just don't know the power of Yahshua. Right. We all need to say that. You know, we deny what Yahshua can do. And matter of fact, we read it just earlier. We read that first Corinthians. So yeah, the thing is class is the best place. You understand? That's where you can be cleaned up. You understand the God where you have to sit down where the gospel's preached and be real about it. You check it out and find it out for yourself. You know, I mean, Romans, the first chapter. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he talks about, well, you know, the, the, the we'll read 121 maybe and come down. Maybe 125 or whatever. There's a lot of stuff in Romans, the first chapter. This is after the cross. This is the age we live in. Right. And we just had it read in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It had homosexual there. It said, right. you will not inherit the kingdom. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're just reading That's what's fun. in the Bible. Now, you know, people are going to always, people don't believe what's in the Bible. They think it's some game or something. I don't they know. They think it's a story. It's like a fable. They don't take it serious. Like it's an actual event that happened. Well, so go ahead and read that 121 there. This is after Romans 1 and 20. Yeah. Okay, because that, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim. Neither and he said, people. he said right before that, that they are without excuse. Right. After you've been told the thing, you don't have no excuse, but people's got a lot of them. Yeah. No, that's the way I am. I can't stop. You understand? Yeah. 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 Just like, you know, it's hard for an alcoholic to stop. <laughs> you understand? Because they love the alcohol. Well, it's the same way with demons. It can't. And that's they, why. A demon want to hold on to their soul. And you as a witness yourself, when you said the things that you went through personally, you know, said, but I, you know, I changed now and I don't do those things. Yeah, you know, that's having power I, over you. And it, it kind of prompted me, even after Ruth spoke, I was like, okay, I, I, I've been struggling with this for a while, trying to talk to a family member, but um, encouraging, of course, we encourage them to come to class, you know. Of course. And it's not like we're afraid to tell them, you just tell them. You That's know, it. Right. That's the best place. This is like the hospital. It's a, he's a, uh, we call it the, well, uh, a metaphysician is beyond the physical and it's trying to heal uh, what's wrong with you from the inside. You understand? Uh, we're all ignorant, wrong, darkness, deceived. You understand? There ain't nobody can say they had all this understanding before they walked in here. If you did, you're a liar. <laughs> you understand? We all had to sit down and get something learned. You understand? We've all been wrong. And, and sometimes we don't remember where we come from. You understand? Uh, but go ahead and, and get uh, read on from Romans 1 there, just to let it see there. Because uh, that, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible Elohim into an image made like to corruptible, corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, Yahweh also and gave, don't don't people think don't people think that they they're wise <laughs> and they become fools mm -hmm. and then they're out there uh, changing the glory of the uncorruptible Yahweh into an image like the corruptible man they worship anything other than Yahweh that he made them he he's the creator but they're and that's what Dr Kinley said all you have is the creator and the created. And the devil wants you to worship the created instead of the creator. Right. And so he'll have you just believe in all kinds of things that are wrong. Go ahead. Verse 24. Wherefore, Yahweh also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of Yahweh into a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever 
For this cause, mm -hmm. Yahweh gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise... Now, what that is, that's... Uh, well, go ahead. So that's like right the I'll, woman changing the natural use to that which is against nature is the woman with a woman. See, that's what that is. Read on. Mm -hmm. For the uh, and likewise, and likewise also, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, man with man doing that which is indecent and re and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was proper. In other and words, he, Yahweh made it so that that's how he populates, and that's how people are born, but is when a man with a woman, but a man with a man and a woman with a woman, it, it, it can't be any birth or offspring right. that no, way. No, no fruit. Mm -hmm. And even, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge, Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not proper, be filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, coveted, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Yahweh, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil, things, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, with, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but consent with them that do them. See, you don't only see. There's a lot of things involved there than just sexual things. You understand? There's a lot of things there, and to see how the devil's involved in all kind of ways, just causing people yeah. to go against whatever Yahweh says or wants you to, to be. You're supposed to serve, honor, obey, and glorify Yahweh. But what you're doing is usually serve, honor, obey, and glorify yourself, and and and, and not. <laughs> and it says, and also. You don't only do them, but you consent with them that do it. You understand? That means mm -hmm. you go along with them. <laughs> and that ain't good neither. No. And y'all don't like that either. In other yeah. words, you got to call what's wrong, wrong, and what's right, right, more or less. Yes. And it's hard Dr. to do. Lewis, it. Dr. Kendall Perry has a hand up. Sure, go ahead. I'm, you know, but that we did read the first Corinthians six and nine it says that those things you will not inherit the kingdom. And it says you were once that way, but now you're washed and cleansed through the name of or through Yahshua the Messiah, the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. You all go ahead. This is something else here. Yeah. No, I, it's just minutes. a question about um you made um the statement about how uh, a satanic spirit will make a person believe that they have the Holy Spirit and they don't. And that's the first time I've heard it put that way i've all i've heard put you know they'll make you a person believe that they don't have the holy spirit but not the other way around and i wanted to know if you could give me some examples of that yeah, it's it's both ways you understand i mean yeah it's both ways i mean that's how powerful demons are well <laughs> what do you think what do you think they're out in the baptist church saying they got the holy spirit what are the catholics saying and that the Pope oh, is okay. There. I got you it. Understand? I got it. I so got it. I thought that, I... That, that's one case, but it also happens in school. You those people out in LA, you can't tell them they ain't got the Holy Spirit, okay. even though they're preaching All false right. doctrine. You understand? Okay, because it's, I was but, saying, thinking that you know, um, if you have a, if he's giving you actual revelation and you truly understand the gospel, Yahshua Messiah, then how does that happen? And yeah, guess, when you it like doesn't. when you say when it's a, when it's truly that way, you understand. Okay. And Doctor Kinley said, if you're born of the Spirit, that don't mean you know everything. You can right. be wrong about something, and when the Holy Spirit corrects you and you receive the correction, 
and the correction is being chast, you know, go by the scriptures. If the Holy Spirit wrote the scriptures and you have the Holy Spirit, aren't you going to agree with what the Holy Spirit said? Mm -hmm. right. But we can't be wrong about something. Maybe we just don't have the understanding and we were taught wrong. There's a lot of places where I, I know I was taught wrong about things. Okay. Even I got it. Thanks. Added. But after <laughs> I appreciate it's, that. But, yeah, but after I'm corrected, I can I can say, oh yeah, I was wrong about that. And you give up that right. stuff. But some of these people don't want to give up their false doctrine. They yeah. just hold on to it and just keep preaching it. You understand? Yeah. That's a bastard and not a son. You yeah, understand? I just I just want to say Especially one thing. Because I, I'm sorry. I know time is yeah, up. I just want right. to say one thing. In a class setting, if I know so and so, you know, every time I go over to Uncle Bobby's house, he messes with the little kids. Then I'm not going over to Uncle Bobby's house, and I'm going to let people know this guy is not right. You know what I'm saying? We don't say, "Oh well, he's a speaker." Oh well, he's the dean. No, he ain't right. You know, call a cop. Sometimes, sometimes we feel like we're so impressed with somebody on the floor and they're doing things that are just something that should put them in jail and maybe they should go to jail. It says, now I have written on to you to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, covetous, an idolater, a railer, a drunkard, an extortioner with such a one not to eat. So I know that my kids get messed up when we go over to Uncle Bobby's. Guess where we're not going? Uncle Bobby's. Uncle and Bobby's. <laughs> and I'm going to let the people know this man is not correct. And if he is correct, right. then he will change. And he probably needs to be convicted. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. He really does. <laughs> but I will say this. You know, the last, well, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't, but it is in the last minutes, matter of fact, of, of the school. The, the international dean was telling people what was